want to play uh, a piece of audio from the Blaze TV's Elijah Schaefer, who is in Washington, D.C., covering the rallies this weekend. Listen. For months, we've seen rioting after rioting after rioting across the country in cities like this right here in Washington, D.C. And you ask yourself, could the police not stop it? Could they just not somehow prevent these riots and protests from getting out of control? Well, guess what we found out tonight? If you look right behind me, the, they have shut off every single road to traffic. Behind me over to right behind me, there is line after line after line for blocks of police that have cordoned everybody off and suddenly brought peace within minutes to the streets of D.C. So what you're telling me right now is that what we've witnessed over the last few months was not because cities couldn't control themselves, not because D.C. couldn't get under control. It's because they intentionally let the violence happen and they didn't use their tactics, skill or force to prevent the madness. And tonight what you're seeing is the hypocrisy. We have Elijah Schaefer joining us now. Hello, Elijah. How are you? I'm doing all right, Glenn. Thanks for having me on. You bet. So, um, you know, this is a democratically run city, uh, run into the ground most of the time by Democrats. They couldn't stop the rioting. They had statues that were pulled down, attacked. Uh, And then this weekend, I was in Washington, D.C. as well, and I've never seen a place more locked down than this. Yeah, so, you know, when, I, when I'm when i talking about the fact that the police used new tactics this weekend to control crowds, <laughs> I mean that in the most sarcastic way possible. I mean, this is these are not new training tactics. This is just the first time I'm seeing them implemented. And what's sad is, is that this is not just a theory. I have contacts in the Metropolitan Police Department who contacted me specifically and confirmed my theory and said, this is true. We've known how to keep crowds separate, how to keep them from businesses, how to exhaust them by, you know, cordoning them off and marching them through the streets. We just were told to stand down. We were told to let off previously, meaning the government, especially in our nation's capital, sanctioned the destruction of federal property, the destruction of private property, and chaos in the streets of an American city That was a government choice, and that's a disgrace. And yet there were uh, four people stabbed and 33 arrested uh, over the weekend during these uh, protests. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, so let's, let's be honest here. Number one, you know, Twitter, where conversations take place, likes to continue to say four people got stabbed. Let's clarify, these were Trump supporters that were stabbed. Uh, They want to make it sound like Trump supporters walked around and stabbed a bunch of random people in the streets. Mm -hmm. Um, On top of that, you know, people continually are talking about how, oh, you know, people stabbed the Trump supporters in self-defense. And I go, oh, we have a bunch of Kyle Rittenhouse fans out there on Twitter that I didn't know about talking about the need to use weapons for self-defense in serious situations. It's fun to see that suddenly everyone wants the acquittal of Mr. Rittenhouse. I can't wait for them at the next trial. Um, But on top of that, um, what was happening, as always, is that anti-Trump protesters, agitators were going around the streets at night and were trying to disrupt and cause problems um, at at during the march of the Proud Boys and the people in the streets. And they were going around attacking people. Um, Some of the Proud Boys fought back um, and this individual pulled out a knife. Um, stabbed one of the one of the Proud Boys uh, in the lung, popped the lung. Uh, they stabbed a few others. This was just a single altercation. Police broke it up within minutes. But that just shows you how volatile these situations can be. That even though police can gain control, um, it doesn't stop people from you know being critically wounded. I do believe they are expected to survive, uh, but I do know that they were in critical condition the last time that I checked but they are being stabilized. So are you saying that the Proud Boys uh, were not causing any problems themselves? They were attacked? Yeah, so this is what I want to bring up, and I want to clarify this to the American people. You know, I'm not a Proud Boys apologist. Uh, by no means am I there to, to defend a certain group. I'm just there to document. But when it came to the police, right, the police were holding back both the Proud Boys and uh, Antifa and BLM. Antifa and BLM were throwing bricks, water bottles, rocks at the police who were holding them back. The Proud Boys were just taking a knee and standing there. I watched officers get injured, one limp away. I saw an officer get hit to the ground by these objects. I mean, 
this shows you the difference in the sides. Um, not to mention, you know, I do know the Proud Boys did want to fight, you know, some of these Antifa and BLM members. But I can tell you that the primary agitators that night, um, Antifa was sending uh, reconnaissance people uh, on bikes with two-way radios, um, mm-hmm. you know, into the Proud Boys crowd. I mean, they, they, were, they were looking for a fight. And these were not just, you know, random, uh, as they like to say on the line, you know, frustrated black young men and women who just wanted civil rights who were being targeted by white supremacists. These, these are white, young, young 20-somethings. Yes. yes, these are radical anarchists, communists, people who have uh, believe in extreme agendas that uh, are looking to cause altercations because they know that not only will the police do nothing, but they know that the media is on their side. And guess what? They were right. Not only could they stab Trump supporters, but they could get away with it and they could let the blame on the Trump supporters because the media has their side. Elijah, there was one video that made the rounds a lot, at least from um, the mainstream side of uh, seemingly a couple uh, walking away, trying to get away from what was described as a group of Proud Boys members. And they were being sort of sucker punched. I mean, the video was pretty, pretty bad. Do you have any idea what that that incident was about? Yeah, I think are, are you talking about the older couple? It's like a young, um, well, not young, but they were supposed to be like a Christian couple. If it's the video I'm talking, I'm thinking about that was captured by Drew Hernandez. Is that is that what you're referring to? I'm not sure. This was one that was that was more touted by it seemed like the left and the mainstream media, saying that the Proud Boys were beating up a couple as they were trying to exit the the area. Yeah. See, I, okay, maybe I haven't seen that that video, and I would be happy to to see it. You know. Um, I, I can tell you this, you know, I did see a few couples beat up by Antifa and BLM. I did see a lot of chaos and confusion. Um, I would say that there's, you know, I'd say there's jerks probably on every side of right. the political battle, <laughs> you know. So if, if somebody did fight, I'm, well, I would condemn that. Uh, if the Proud Boys were attacking an old couple, I haven't seen that. But, you know, those people should be held accountable. And if they committed a crime, they should be, you know, charged or prosecuted for, for violence. Uh, but what I think is so interesting about the hypocrisy here, the left gets onto one video and they go, well, here's the video of this happening. And you go, well, want to see the dozen or more videos of the other side doing greater mm-hmm. or worse things? Mm-hmm. Well, no, you're not going to you're not going to get that. L- listen to this Washington Post article. Uh, multiple people stabbed after thousands gather for pro-Trump demonstrations in Washington. Thousands of massless rally gal- uh, rally goers who refused to accept the results of the election turned downtown Washington into a falsehood filled spectacle Saturday, two days before the Electoral College will make the president's loss official. In smaller numbers than the gathering last month, they roamed from the Capitol to the mall and back again, seeking inspiration from speakers who railed against the Supreme Court, Fox News, President-elect Joe Biden. The crowds cheered for recently pardoned former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, marched with conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, and stood in awe of a flyover from what appeared to be Marine One. But at night... The scene became violent. At least four people were stabbed near Harry's Bar and 11th and F Street Northwest, uh, a gathering point for the Proud Boys, a male chauvinist organization with ties to white nationalism. The victims were hospitalized and suffered possibly life-threatening injuries, D.C. fire spokesman Doug Buchanan said. It was not immediately clear which groups the attackers or the injures might have been affiliated The violence escalated after an evening of face-offs with counter-protesters that took place near Harry's, Black Lives Matter Plaza, Franklin Square, and other spots downtown. This is, I mean, is there any doubt who the bad guy is in this story? You know, Glenn, I, you know, your your listeners cannot see me. My, My hand is just covering my face when I hear that because, number one, I want to say, what a wonderful piece. I mean, now I know why Cuomo got an Emmy. Whoever wrote that should get like a Tony for, you know, for writing the best play I've ever seen because that whatever they wrote is a fic- fictional story that did not happen. That is not what went down. I mean, what an incredible manipulation of facts to try to control a narrative that's untrue. I, I want to make three corrections. Number one, um, 
this was not a fanfare of fairy tales. These were individuals and speakers talking about facts, about truth, about things that they saw and witnessed, uh, about court cases and testimony. Um, and there was nothing outlandish that I heard said during the speeches. These were very normal people like Sebastian Gorka that were speaking at this event, not insane people. Alex Jones wasn't speaking there. Um, Alex Jones wasn't marching with the event. He was leading something else, which is fine. And Alex, is, I like, I think Alex is a cool guy. He's, you know, he's, got, <laughs> he's a very interesting individual, but, you know, he's got his own thing. But, you know, they, they, they try to tie him in, you know, to try to discredit, you know, as if that does something. I don't know. But on top of that, and there's the pictures. I can show you uh, gifts. I can show you AP images. I can show you from Daily Mail, videos from friends, verified accounts, not obscure individuals. That, I mean, it's very gruesome and it's very sad of watching the knights enter from black clad, black block individuals with face coverings, stabbing people in Proud Boy, you know, the typical Perry yellow uh, polo that they wear. I mean, you would have to be blind to not be able to clearly watch this video, understand the agitation, see the knife go in. I and mean, you can frame by frame watch this happen. And this journalist says, we, we just don't know. I mean, this person is either drunk, stupid, or purposely misleading their audience. And I'd probably either go for all three or at least just the last one. Yeah, there is no, there's no truth in the uh, media at all, and we all, we all know that. But thank you for being there, Elijah. We appreciate it. I'm glad you're safe.